America's cattle producers have been working for generations to protect the land, water, and air resources in their care. One place that knows a lot about this is the Kempfer Cattle Company. Joining me now are brothers George and Henry Kempfer. George and Henry, thanks so much for being here with us today. Um, George, tell us a little bit about your family's history here of raising cattle in Florida. Okay, Kate, so uh, we've been here for a little over 120, uh, 120 years. My great-great-grandfather uh, came down here and, and started this place in the early 1900s. Um, been in the cattle and timber businesses primarily, as well as turf, turf grass, and uh, it's been in the family and family owned and operated uh, the entire time and uh, been blessed to be part of it. And uh, my dad, my uncle had been running it and uh, then just in the last year or so, they've turned it over to my generation, which is the fifth generation um, to kind of take charge. So George, can you tell us a little bit about the cattle here on the ranch that might be unique to some of our viewers? Okay, well, we're a commercial cow-calf operation primarily, um, also in the purebred business, but a lot of our cattle have a little more Brahmin uh, percentage in them, just uh, cattle that can handle this environment a lot better, the heat, humidity, and the parasites, both, both internal and external, just uh, they're a lot hardier animals. So we'll, we'll keep a percentage of that in there, and we raise our own Brahmin bulls and also have a, a sale every year. But The genetics really work for you here in Florida. They do. I mean, we need cattle that can be efficient, and these cattle are, are more efficient than anything else we've tried. Of course, the, uh, the higher percentage of Brahmin, the more efficiencies we get in this environment particularly. So uh, we have to concentrate on doing that. But still, at the same time, you know, concentrate on having a, producing good feeder calves. Yeah, I know there's a lot of feeder calves that come out of here, um, out of Florida, just in general. Um, you know, Henry, George mentioned um, cattle, turf, timber, water is a big part of all of those those operations or those those specialties here on the ranch. How important is water management and what managing those resources to y'all? Yes, uh, Kate, water management is huge for us and you know there's a lot of people live in Florida and uh, just like everywhere uh, you know the, the big concern is is there enough water for everybody and every everyone who needs it and you know with us in agriculture it's, it's extremely important for us to to not only show you know, how important water is to us in our, in our ranching, growing grass, farming, uh, whatever form of agriculture we need it in, but also to show that we can be efficient uh, in how we use it. Because if we don't show that, then with all the demand for it, the amount of people here, you know, we're gonna struggle, you know, as we move forward, being able to keep what we need to be, you know, uh, productive in agriculture. So can you tell us about some of the unique water management systems that are in place here on your ranch? This is one of the other things we have here is a 600 acre water retention area. And a lot of the excess water goes towards the marsh in that direction. We're able to hold that water and then in turn, when it turns the dry season, use that to irrigate, especially Mike in the turf grass fields, but even some in the pastures as well. And it's also used for a nutrient retention uh, process as well. Important to hold those nutrients. Henry, anything to add? Yeah, you know, we do have a big swamp that runs through the property that, uh, you know, 300 square miles of land drain into this swamp. And it's actually the second largest uh, tributary to the St. Johns River. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of water run through here and it it, uh, it does back up just a little bit. You know, the, the uh, level of the St. Johns River right here outside of Melbourne is only 17 feet above sea level. And it's one of the very few rivers in the world that runs north and it goes all the way to Jacksonville before it hits the ocean. So as you can imagine, at only 17 feet there, there's not a lot of drop in it between here and uh, in Jacksonville. So uh, we, the water backs up quite a bit right here at certain times of the year, but uh, that swamp works as a really great uh, source for uh, a resource for, you know, filtering that water out uh, going to the river. So that's another service then that the ranch provides is sort of cleaning some water that's going off the ranch to other places. It is amazing how pristine that water will be leaving as it comes through that swamp. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of helps you with the grass management then too, through the drought cycle, is that fair? It is, and you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, to grow a lot of grass by doing that way, but just by keeping that water table up, and, and it does certainly help grow grass by all means, yes. You're not that far from Orlando, which is a big traffic area, and you've got a lot of people moving into the state of Florida every day. 
what challenges and opportunities does that present to you here on the ranch in terms of your stewardship practices with your water management and opportunities to interact with these people? You know, absolutely, there are some challenges. You know, we here directly haven't been affected as a lot of the other ranchers around the state. We're kind of blessed in this area where we have Deseret Ranch on our north and south borders, and then we have state uh, conservation lands, you know, St. John's River on one side and a management area on the other. So we're kind of blessed in that regard. But, uh, you know, they always say that, my dad always says, you know, the two things we have to be concerned about more than anything our population and regulation. And the more people we have here, you know, the people in agriculture become more of a minority and our say is less. So we, it's extremely important for us to get out and educate the community and these people moving down here, just how important agriculture is uh, to us. It's, uh, it's huge to, uh, to this whole area of Florida because we saw, have, play such an important role with our, you know, climate like it is to be able to produce you know, a lot of cattle down here, we can do a lot of farming and, and uh, vegetable farming, things like that too. So it's, it is crucial to us, but the population uh, growth has also, you know, had, had some, some good things come out of it for us. As George mentioned earlier, we're in the turf grass business, sod business, that's one way we can capitalize on it by growing sod and, uh, you know, put on these yards. So at least we can ensure they get a good, pretty yard. Now, you all have put some of this ranch in a conservation easement. How has that helped you with your stewardship goals of the natural resources and the ranch here? How has also helped you secure the future of this place for, for other generations and the legacy of the ranch? Yeah, so in 1998, we started our first conservation easement project. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't ever want to see this land develop. We want to, we want to keep it in production agriculture. We want to keep it as pristine as we can and putting houses on it's certainly the last thing we ever want to see happen, any kind of development. And, you know, we look forward to, to continuing this and we don't want to be the generation that turns it over to something else. And we are now uh, have applied for another conservation easement program, which is the Rural Family Act, uh, family lands deal. And hopefully we'll know something before the end of the year, whether or not that goes through. But either way, whether it does or not, we're gonna continue to do what we can to preserve the place as is the next generations. Everybody, this is special, this is home, and we will continue to do what we can to keep it in, in agriculture for many generations to come. Henry, what would you add? Uh, I wanna add something there uh, to what George was talking about in our conservation easement, and it was the original conservation easement we did was kind of twofold. Not only did we wanna conserve the, uh, the land and put it under conservation, but we also, uh, it's very important to us to get a, uh, some estate planning done at that time. My grandmother was still alive and uh, we were in a situation where we were gonna have to do something and it put us in a, in a position where we could handle the estate planning with my grandmother. And what a lot of people don't realize that if we don't do this planning and work ahead and, and try to get all that done in time, that we could potentially lose a big portion of the ranch. And in a lot of cases, you're gonna to sell to the best buyer. Even though we don't wanna see it developed, you're in a situation where you have to get as much as you can out of it. So it's gonna in turn, especially down here in Florida, a lot of this land that's being sold is going into houses. And, uh, and that's ultimately what's gonna happen. So that's why it's so important for us. But that's, that, some of this money that uh, the state state and federal government have come up with for conservation plans is huge because not only does it preserve the land, it also enables the family to stay in business longer due to some of these planning situations. So it's, it's really good not only for you as a family to manage some of those tricky type of generational transfer type of issues, but it also keeps this place open and, uh, and, and in maintaining a really healthy ecosystem for the environment, for the people coming into Florida to, to enjoy wildlife too. Absolutely. That's right. Thank you both for your time today. Thanks for letting us come and, and take a peek here. Thanks for all you do each and every day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us.